I'm going to brush in a little bit of this color right down here in the bottom of this tree. This is going to be, at least to start out, the shadow color of this yellow tree. And it's going to look fairly green. That's okay. This is just an undercoat that we have going on right now. And I'm going to put a little bit more in here, keeping it pretty thin. Now I'm going to take some burnt sienna and some ultramarine blue, and I'm going to mix almost a black, but it's going to be just slightly on the brown side. This is fairly thin as well. We're gonna, we're gonna apply it pretty thin. And then I'm gonna take some of this color and just barely start to indicate like a couple branches coming up on this tree. And I'm also gonna apply some of that down in here, right at this area where this tree and some of the bushes around it would meet our ground plane here. Those are going to be the darkest darks in your painting. From here on out, nothing in your painting should be as dark as what we just put in here. So if you put this same value, the same dark, which is about as dark as we can go, if you stick that up in here, you're going to ruin the whole sense of aerial perspective. And aerial perspective is just a fancy term of things looking like they recede, things looking further away. So that's why in a lot of my paintings, this is why I like to work from front to back in most cases and then from back to front because your darkest darks are usually in your immediate foreground and they're the easiest value to gauge. If I stick the sky in first, the sky is a bit more ambiguous. You know, is it like a number... If you're using the store-bought value finder where number 10 or value 10 is your white and you do your sky, it's like, okay, is the sky like a number 8 value? Is it a number 9, a number 10? You know, what is it? And you're shooting from the hip more. That's a hunting term where you're not aiming but just mounting a gun on your hip and shooting instead. Um, you're shooting from the hip more in that. Versus if you start with your darkest darks in your foreground, you have your anchor point. And then you can tell yourself, okay, if I want this to look further away, I got to make sure nothing in here gets as dark as this, what I've just put in the foreground for the most part. Okay, our next thing to help with the whole concept of aerial perspective is remember how I said that as things recede, if you break all colors down, into the three primaries and remember all colors are composed of the three primaries all right i mean it's a it's a, it's a bit of an oversimplification but we can use it for this concept here for teaching this concept so if you reduce all colors down to the three primaries which is of course yellow red and blue all right now we're not talking about the munsell wheel now we're just talking classical primaries yellow is the first color to drop out as things recede Therefore, your strongest yellows are going to be in your most immediate foreground. So I want to get some of these strong yellows in this tree right in here. We have some of the shadow color, but I want to get some of the strong yellows in because that's going to help push everything else further back as we go. So I'm going to take some cadmium yellow light. And I'm not going to go as strong as I can right now. I'm going to go fairly strong, but not as strong as I can. I'm going to take cadmium yellow light, and I'm going to mix a little bit of yellow ochre and a little bit of cadmium. I'm going to go in and stick some of that in here. Now, you, I know some of you might have had a lot of um, uh, burnt sienna that you stuck on this, you know, and trying to get this tree shape, and that's okay, you know. And the yellow is going to look darker right now because we have all this white canvas on there. So by contrast, the yellow looks darker, but that's going to change. And I'm putting this yellow right now just on the, mostly on the side of the tree that is lit, 
Remember, our light source is coming from the right to the left. And so the, it's going to be the right side of the tree that's going to be more illuminated with the brighter yellow. And if your paint gets thick, I don't want you to have thick paint on this tree right now. If your paint is thick, take a palette knife and go like this and scrape it. Scrape the excess thick paint off like that. You're going to make a bit of a mess. This is not, this tree is not to be a finished product right now. It is merely functioning as an anchor point for our value and our color relationships for the sake of aerial perspective. And the other thing too, one other thing concept I want to explain is that this tree also is our most obvious color in this painting. It's our most pure color. And so getting that in there right away helps us gauge all the other colors. That's one of the things that you also want to go for. We talked about going for our most obvious value at the beginning to create like an anchor point to work off of. The most obvious value is your darkest dark. And we did that right in here. Next thing is if you see all these more ambiguous colors, try to grab the one that's the most obvious to you and stick that one in. In this case, it's this yellow tree. That's our most pure color. This red rock, eh, we're not sure about that yet. We're not sure about this. The sky might be a somewhat obvious color, but the value is kind of ambiguous. So getting this nice dark anchor point in here and then getting this bright yellow in there, fairly bright yellow, is going to be a nice anchor point for gauging our other color, our other um, yeah, color relationships. Thanks for watching this short clip from my most recent live oil painting session. Our group oil painting at home meets online four times a month through Zoom and we work on an oil painting together from start to finish. Members of the group interact not only with me, but with each other while we paint, and they get live feedback on their work. Each session is recorded, which allows members to catch up on anything they may have missed or would like to see again. I also record myself doing the same painting privately in my studio with full commentary. This lets students see how I do the same painting from start to finish in just one or two sessions using a wet on wet technique. We also meet together for live Q&A and critique sessions. And not only that, but members get immediate access to all past painting sessions so they can learn how to paint a wide variety of subject matter at no additional cost. This amounts to hundreds of hours of instruction. Access to oil painting at home's live sessions are very limited and turnover is very low. So if you've not done so yet, sign up on the priority list by clicking on the link in the description below. Once the space becomes open, I'll let you know.